Good evening and welcome to the November 26, 2019 New England Board of Aldermen meeting. The prayer tonight will be given by Alderwoman Harris. Thank you. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we come to you tonight and just ask that you uh, guide us to make sure that we're doing your work. God, we just ask that any personal agendas could be set aside and have one agenda, which is to progress our city. God, I ask that everyone has a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving in your name. Amen. 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 Please join me with a pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Alderman Bingles here. Alderwoman Harris. Present. Alderman Astor. Here. Mayor Outlaw. Alderman Kinsey. Here. Alderman Bess. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Odom. Here. The Mayor Outlaw was feeling a bit under the weather and he says thank you to Mr. Stevens for that. So I wanted to share that. <laughs> He's spreading, <laughs> spreading the, the wealth. Right? Has everyone had an opportunity to review the consent agenda? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we approve consent agenda as is. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Item number eight, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Odom. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to, I, as I typically do, I want to recognize that we have a group here from uh, Leadership Craven, the, the new class that are here. Uh, they're all sitting on the third row in a line there, so we usually recognize them whenever they come. Uh, perhaps uh, they'll be uh, some of the people who are willing to, to uh, use their time uh, for some of our boards if they wish to do so. So just wanted to recognize them real quick. Thank you. They're in attendance. Um, item number eight uh, is uh, uh, conduct a public hearing and consider adopting an ordinance to Annex 310 South Street. John and Laura Lambert, property owners, petition the city to Annex 0.733 acres of land located at 310 South Street. Uh, the property is located in uh, Township 2 and is situated off Sandy Point Road in the Bridgeton area. This public hearing was called for at the board's previous meeting. Uh, after conducting the hearing, the board is asked to consider adopting an ordinance to annex the property. There's memos included in your packet from Mr. Ruggieri, uh, along with a map of the property. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Board, any questions? I'd like to make a motion to open up a public meeting. I don't think we need a motion to do that, so we'll open a public hearing. Oh, public hearing. <coughs> Here's what I'm going to ask if anybody wants to come forward. Anybody wants to come forward? I don't see anyone. I make motion to close the public hearing. I second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Public hearing is closed. We'll entertain a motion on item number eight now. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the ordinance to Annex 310 South Street. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Odom? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Motion passes. Item number nine, Mr. Stevens. Thank you. Uh, item number nine is a also a conduct a public hearing and consider adopting an ordinance to Annex 618 West Thurman Road. Charles and Dana Riddick, property owners, have petitioned the city to annex 6.10 acres located at 618 West Thurman Road. The property is further identified as Craven County Tax Parcel 7-109-15001. The board called for this public hearing at its last meeting. Um, after conducting the public hearing, uh, the board is asked to consider adopting an ordinance to annex the property. As a reminder, this is the property for which a sewer use agreement was approved at the board's October 22nd meeting. Uh, a memo from Mr. Sorry about that. Uh, a memo from Mr. Ruggieri is attached along with a map of the property. Board, any questions before we open a public hearing? I'd yes. like to make a motion to open up a public hearing. We don't have to have a motion oh. to open it. Yeah. You don't <laughs> have to close it. Oh. <laughs> Just to close really? it. So I'll open it's the public <laughs> hearing if anyone has any comments from the public regarding this item. Make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Now we'll take a motion on item number nine. Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion that we consider adopt, 
and adopt the ordinance to annex 618 West Thurman Road. Second. I have a motion and a second on <coughs> item number nine. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'd like a roll call starting with Alderman Bess. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Odom? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, any appointments tonight by anyone? All right, seeing none. Attorney's report? That's important tonight, Mayor Pro Tem. City Manager's report. I have uh, one item I just wanted to mention. Uh, I know at uh, a previous meeting the board had asked for uh, some some research to be performed, which I'm still in the process of doing on the discretionary fund policy that y'all have. Um, I've kind of started to look around. I, I also check the blogs with uh, the School of Government. I haven't been able to find anything yet, but I'm gonna look, I'm gonna reach out to a couple of people that I have as contacts up there, maybe some other municipalities. Uh, I know New York City has one where they have uh, uh, that they allow for. Uh, discretionary use of funds for nonprofits specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, for profits are completely cut out. Uh, it has to be for profit. It has to be for the, the public good. But um, I'm compiling that information and I'll report back to you as soon as I have that either through an email or I'll come back to the board, whichever one is you're choosing. Uh, but uh, I plan on putting that together for the board as well. So. Thank you, sir. It's the only thing I have. Okay. Uh, new business. We'll start with Alderman Best. Um. Yes, um, I guess I need to direct this to maybe Matt's attention or in, and you too, Mr. Uh, City Manager. Um, I've had s some uh, constituents and to contact me wanting to know if the city can install some of the light reflectors on the streets because when it's raining really bad, you cannot even see the lanes. So if that could be done, I mean, especially down News Boulevard, Broad Street, um, Glenbrony Road to, to start. Okay. So I, 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 and I know myself, I have, have experienced that, especially um, it was a week, the last time we had the really bad um, rain, um, it was real difficult driving and to determine the state if you're inside your lane or not. Is that something that the we, city would do or is that the state or? We um, certainly could look at some of our streets. The three that you mentioned specifically though are NCDOT streets. So uh, Matt could reach out to them uh, with, you know, uh, Glen Burnie Road, News Boulevard and, and MLK. Uh, all of those are NCDOT maintained roads. So uh, we certainly can reach out to them and, and, and make that request. I had received three complaints about Glen Burnie Road, and I'm wondering if they haven't put the final thermoplast down by chance because there's no reflectivity on those lines. Yeah, that's a perfect question. That's the perfect answer. We did have some correspondence with DOT this past week. Uh, one of all of best constituents had emailed us, and DOT did tell us that they've done some temporary painting on those streets that were resurfaced. Highway 70 was one of them, but also uh, um, Glen Burnie Road. And they indicated that when they come back in the spring, they'll be putting the thermoplastic down to resolve that issue. Well, Matt, while you're there, another thing that I had as well. Have you had any contact from any citizens um, over in the Lake Tyler area? Because I know the entrance coming in and out of there onto 43 is really busy. I think and probably the development months, is still going on over there. Six months to a year ago, you had mentioned something about right, a, exactly. a stoplight or, or something like that. We reached out to DOT. Um, I think DOT's response at that point was they were going to continue to monitor the intersection during construction mm -hmm. as that subdivision got built out. Okay. Um, but as far as being reached out from anybody that lives in that neighborhood, I have not. Okay. All right. So uh, that's just something that if we can keep on advising it because. I know I was over in that area and it it took me like 10 minutes. It all depends on the time of the day, of sure. course, you know, because 43 is heavily trafficked. So, um, but if we could just keep that on the advisement, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. All right, Alder McKenzie. Well, I'd just like to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone and uh, <clears throat> out through the city. The decoration looks very, very nice. And I like that little pop-up that we said Happy Thanksgiving uh, near the bear. So that's very, very nice. And I'd like to say thank you very much for the city's cooperation and participation. Happy Thanksgiving. Is that all, sir? That is it, sir. 
Um, Foster, this was sitting here. Did you want to come up and talk about this? So in 2003, we uh, did a comprehensive master plan for the Parks and Recreation Department, and, and uh, there was an update to that in 2013, and so we're going through the process now for another up update, and so we're having a first of a series of meetings. Uh, the first one is going to be on December 12th. It's going to be a floating meeting from 4.30 to 7 p.m., uh, and at that time, we're going to receive public input on our existing parks, any programs or amenities they would like to see, any new facilities, so that way we can include that in the new master plan which will go through the next 10 years for parks and recreation so great thank you when you say go through the next 10 years can you elaborate on that and how is that handled well with a master plan our goal is to whatever that plan whatever is determined to be in that plan that's what that's kind of the road map that we take okay. uh, in, in in our uh, department um, so if Mark Marietta Park, that was one of the things that was in the plan. We're, we're implementing those steps now, so, and we'll continue to do that. So we're getting public input just to see what the people would like to see moving forward for parks. So you're telling me that, say, I'll just say, for instance, if you got a small, something small, a small park coming, would that take precedence over something as big as we have right now with Mark Marietta? Is it first come first serve basis? How how is that handled? No, it's not on first come first serve basis. It's okay. really going to depend on the need uh, okay. and what the specific items are. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, um, don't go anywhere. I was going to ask you a question. I understand that you attended a seminar not too long ago on these abandoned boats that are lined on some of our shorelines. Can you give us an update on? what you found out and maybe what we can do to prevent that or make the owner responsible? Yes, I, I attended a meeting in Washington. It was, um, I think it was two Fridays ago, or last Friday, it could have been last Friday. Um, and there were about 30 coastal cities, towns, counties that were in attendance at the meeting. And, and um, by the time the meeting was over, it was a half day meeting. Uh, I was still banging my head up against the wall because you know, I was hoping that, that we would hear some things on what we could do, that, that there was money available to be able to remove boats. Currently there is not, but there, there is movement to do that. But you've got to, um, you've got to have an ordinance. That's going to be the big thing. You've got to have an ordinance that addresses derelict and abandoned boats. And so I've talked with the city manager about this, and um, I think we're going to be moving forward to ask for permission from the General Assembly to be able to get our ordinance. And I found out that a lot of the cities and towns are working toward the same thing as well. Currently Southport, Manio, and I think one other city uh, have an ordinance in place and they haven't started doing the fining yet uh, with their derelict boats, but they're going through the process, Southport's going through the process now so they'll see how, how it holds up in court. Um, North Carolina Marine Patrol, the Coast Guard, Wildlife Resources were at attendance and they made presentations and it was specifically brought up on how can we get rid of some of these boats and, and really it's, it's pretty hard because if, if we go out there and just take a boat, we could be sued by the boat owner uh, unless it is declared abandoned. The Coast Guard gets involved, Wildlife Resources gets involved when, when it's determined that a boat is a, abandoned. The Wildlife Resources actually has a database of, of all boats that are, um, that are basically left alone in the waterways. And I've actually sent uh, Wildlife Resources and the Coast Guard information on some of the boats that we have in Newburn. Currently there are two that are adjacent uh, to uh, Lawson Creek Park. One is behind my office and the other is at Jack's Island, and so I'm waiting to hear from them to see if they have surveyed those boats yet or not. Uh, it's just going to be a time-consuming process, and uh, like I've said, told a few people, you know, we've gotten quotes to remove one of the boats, um, and I think it's the biggest, um, the biggest one that the public has complained about right behind my office, and that's a, it's very expensive to remove them. Uh, you know, we've talked about can we can we find them for littering or something like that, and. What the Marine Patrol, the Wildlife Resources, and the Coast Guard all said about if you hit them with a littering charge, that's not going to, at the end of the day, they're still not going to remove the boat uh, because it's going to be an expense for them as well. So what, what do you gain from that? And so a lot of towns have not pursued that. Um, we can pursue that and see what happens. <coughs> right, it's a problem. And, and as I've had conversations with the city manager since I've been here, I think this is the, 
eighth and ninth vote we've had, and it's just going to continue to get worse until we have something uh, in our ordinance that, that has some teeth and, and we can do something about it. How quickly are you going to be able to get something together for the state? Well, uh, in my conversations with, with uh, the attorney, it, it's, it's a time-consuming process to, to go through the state, uh, but, you know, we're going to start working on that now. Well, I don't understand the reason why we just don't write them literary citations. I mean, I just, you know. We can, we can get with the police department and, and get them to go ahead and do that. I think if they get a littering citation, I mean, you, you might not ever get any, they may not ever pay it, but it, won't the courts issue a judgment against them or something if they don't pay them their fines? Mm -hmm. Good. So, I mean, they're costing the taxpayers as new and a lot of money. We need to start hitting their pockets a little bit. Okay, we'll speak to the police department on that. Right, thank you. All right, yes, sir. And, um, Mark, um, last meeting, I think it was, you, you discussed that you were going to check in, or we discussed that you were going to check in on getting some type of a hot spot or something out in um, Blue Water Rise. You know, they, they promised these people, I think you were in the meeting, they promised these people that they would have services by Thanksgiving, and they had me, they don't even show up for work half the time. You know, they're a long ways from providing services. They've told one of them today that they might be able to get it by first of the year or right after the first of the year. I'll check on that. I apologize. I, have, I haven't been able to check on I know that you've been busy. Yet, so. um, if we could get maybe check and see if somebody could move something in down there for them because they are, they, you know, life's tough when you have no telephone, Internet service, cable TV. You know, and the, yeah. the bad thing about it is, is the kids that – go to school need the internet for their classroom. Work. I'll start making those phone calls tomorrow. Thank you very much. That's all I have, sir. What a woman, Harris. Um, I just want to tell everybody happy Thanksgiving. I don't have anything to report this meeting. So I saved all of mine for the last time. I didn't have anything so I could have my laundry list tonight, so bear with me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, Bobby, you brought up a good point um, about legislative, you know, getting things before the legislator. And um, I thought I'd like to go ahead, uh, Mr. City Manager, and start the process because we're going to have several things that really need to go before our legislative delegation in Raleigh, uh, such as our voting. You know, we're going to be redoing that, and so that's, that package has got to be sent up. There's some other things that we're working on that we do. You know, we have a legislative agenda pretty much, and we need to go ahead and bring that together. So um, I'd like for us in January to start working on that process so that by the end of January we could maybe send some stuff off to them or what we're working on. Is that amenable to you, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just like to, I just think we've got several things and anything else that might be on our legislative agenda that we need, you know, we want to get done, but the legislature has to do it. Let's go ahead and put that in the hopper and send one whole package rather than do these one at a time and might get a little bit more oomph for it and certainly, um, you know, we can contact our uh, legislators and let them know it's coming. So I'd like that looked into. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about um, is the Doubletree has officially started construction. Mr. Ruggieri, I know you're very happy about that, the building department. So they've, they've started construction there. It's official, and they're telling us mid to late May. So um, I hope that's a positive for our downtown, the convention center, while it's open, we're still struggling to book conventions because um, anything more than 300 people, we don't have, not that we don't have the rooms, these larger conventions want rooms close to the convention center. That's the problem. We have hotel rooms. They're just not near where they, they want them. So the sooner that can open, the better it is uh, for the city. Uh, next, I'm going to ask Foster to come to the microphone again and talk to everybody about the community tree lighting that's going to happen Friday night, as well as light up the season. And before you tell us all the details, I do want to give a, a huge shout out to Matt um, and the Public Works Department for how hard they've worked to decorate the town by fixing the bears out on the highway and by the magic of Public Works. On Friday, they'll all have Santa hats and say Merry Christmas. So I think it's great that they're able to do that and all the decorating they've done downtown. Um, just thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. Your guys work really hard, and I really appreciate it. And, and you've got the 
genius mechanic <laughs> working with you. But talk to us a little bit about what's going to happen this weekend, and then we'll ultimately end up with the brainchild of uh, my colleague, Alderman uh, Harris and Alderman Odom with New Year's Eve. So okay. I'm going to give them that too because I fought them all the way on that one. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> all right. Well, we are too. And so things are going to, the festivities will start off this Friday at 4.30 p.m. downtown at Union Point Park. We're going to do our tree lighting ceremony. So we'll have Brian Mayer leading the crowd with Christmas carols. We'll have uh, several folks speak. Then right about 5.15, 5.20, we're going to go ahead and light the Christmas tree up. And we've got some, some special lighted displays that, that my staff has been working on that will light those up at that time as well. Then we'll have a nice parade downtown. Santa will be in a, a special sleigh that, that we built. And, uh, and then we're going to light up the season at, uh, on Middle Street. And we've got games and activities. Amanda has done a great job with the coordination of the games and activities. And Santa Claus will be there. But we've got sledding going on. Sledding will start right after the, uh, the downtown is lit up. And that will go until about 9.30 p.m. on Friday night. Uh, so all that will take place. Then the next thing we've got is our flotilla, which is going to be on Saturday, December 7th. It's going to start at 4.30 p.m. We've got Lewis and Clark. They'll do a concert, Christmas music, so that will be a lot of fun. They'll play for about an hour. Then right around 5.30, we'll actually have our flotilla, and then we'll encourage folks to go back downtown and check out all the activities that are going on. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, let's see, December 13th, we have a movie in the park. We're going to show the Polar Express, and that's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of hits on social media with that, so we think we'll have a very huge crowd with that. And then, of course, after the Christmas holiday, we've got our New Year's Eve celebration, the second annual event, and we're really excited about that. We've got a lot of plans. We're changing a lot of things. Uh, got some great bands in place, and we're going to be talking more about that as we get close to it. But a lot of, lot of fun coming up for this holiday season, so we encourage everyone to come downtown and check out what all we've got to offer. Right. One good thing I want the families to know is that a little bit different thing they're going to do the, this year is that we're going to have a cub dropping at 9 o'clock. So for families with younger children who don't want to keep them out to midnight, who want to be prepared to come on out and join us uh, on the 31st, because I think that's a great idea. Let like the cub yes. come down before that's the bear. Right. That's right. <laughs> and we were actually surprised last year. You know, we, we stopped our inflatable. We're, we were planning on stopping our inflatables at 9, but so many kids were, were there until 11 o'clock that we, we kept the inflatables open, so we anticipate that happening again. But, yes, we've got a lot of kids-related activities. Those activities are free, which, which surprised a lot of folks. So it's free inflatables, free games, and things like that. We'll do s'mores and have all kinds of neat things out there. Foster, do you have any information on the celebrity pie in the face that's taking place? I think I'm going to have to defer that to Mr. Montaigne. He's got more information uh, than Somebody I do. Somebody tried to get me. Matt, nope. could you come? Because I just got a text that um, Alderman Dingle has agreed to participate Absolutely. in that. Absolutely. I'm working. So, um, <laughs> I got that same text. I, you did too. Okay. Yeah. I recommended it. <laughs> I do, I do not know all the details. Everybody get their um, frustrations out on me. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I do know is that I did get a phone call after the city manager declined that, uh, that I was requested to, <laughs> to participate. Um, and I think the mayor's going to participate if I'm is he? not wrong. Or they're, or they're trying to get him to participate. But as a, fun drive, as a fundraiser for RCS, they're asking folks to bring a uh, canned food item uh, to Bury Merry Christmas and light up the season. If you bring a canned food item, you will receive a ticket. And then if your ticket is drawn, you get to pie one of the local celebrities. Oh, um, as I indicated, I don't know who they all are. I know Chris Siegel is one of them. I know uh, Kevin Roberts with the Chamber is one. Uh, Sheriff Chip Hughes, I think, is yeah. was one of them and now has somebody in his place. Uh, and there are several <laughs> others that will be out there. So uh, bring a canned good item to Barry Merry Christmas and have your opportunity to pie a celebrity. All right. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, look, one of the last things I want to mention is um, that this week I had the uh, privilege of interviewing um, Captain Curtis Kratz that's going to be on uh, this week from City Hall from the Salvation Army and remind everybody Salvation Army is out there ringing bells. If you want to be a bell ringer, um, you can find out more information uh, go up by going to Salvation Army. And uh, they have their angel tree. They 
They are really helping a lot of people in the season. Be glad to take your donations if you want to ring the bell, you want to give money, but they help a lot of people in need. And I, you know, I'm very thankful this Thanksgiving season. I'm thankful for all of my colleagues here. I'm thankful for our city staff and people who serve our community. Um, and I'm just thankful we live in a giving community. And as we head into the Christmas season, please remember this, we still have many people in need in this community, people who are still not in their homes, people who are suffering from depression and drug abuse and alcohol abuse and everything like that. And there's a lot of people in need. And Linda, Linda Helping Hand, a long time ago, I said, look to your left and look to your right because people are in need. And this is the season of Thanksgiving and as well as helping others. So I want to say God, God, God bless everybody uh, in this holiday season. And my colleague, um, Alderwoman Harris, has reminded me that as we leave here tonight, because I'm the last one and we're going to get out of here in another record time, um, at 8 o'clock, please turn to UNC TV. I guess it's Channel 4 on the local station, and you will see Newburn Rises. It's the documentary that UNC TV has been filming for the last year. You know, they came here the week before the hurricane to just do a, a community input day of talking about issues and our challenges in our community. Little did they know a week later we would face the greatest challenge this community has had in, in many, many years, and they, they documented it. And it's great. I saw the preview this past weekend. Travis Mitchell and his staff has done an incredible job, and it's going to be out there for all of PBS to see tonight at 8 o'clock. So if you want to watch something, it is about our community and the challenges we face, but how resilient we are as a people. So I'm appreciative and hope you all will enjoy watching that. It's great. All right. Is that all? Laundry list is complete. My laundry list is complete. All right. The best. Um, yes, I have one more thing. Um, Jeff, could you please come to the podium, please? Can you give me a, just a little brief update of the, the 404 program, the Haz Hazard Mitigation Grant Program? At, at what point are we at? Uh, the end of last week, we actually received the, um, a list from FEMA of the houses that, that qualified for the grant. I think we had about 80 that went up. We had about 18 came back. So we're now we're in the process of um, getting some extra data, although FEMA seems to always be asking for more paperwork, uh, from, those, from those homeowners. So we're moving forward with that project. Okay. So, yeah. What about the, the ones that I think the last thing I read, it was like 54 that was in um, for elevation? Have you? That's right. Okay. So yeah. all that was included in that Correct. same Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. We got about 18 out of the, out of the and I'll, I'll send that list, but I'll send that list to the city manager. You can share it with the board. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? I'm surprised we got 18. That's pretty good. To be honest, we didn't compare it to some that we've received in past years. Do we need a closed session? Yes, sir. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. <laughs> have a second? Yes. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in opposed? No. Stand adjourned. Yes, sir.